pour résumer, parce que je n'ai pas beaucoup de temps, deux arguments principaux qui nous ont servi à mobiliser les étudiants et les étudiantes au Québec contre la hausse des frais de scolarité. Puis je vais les expliquer brièvement pour vous montrer comment, en fait, on, avec quoi, avec quel mot, on a convaincu les gens, non seulement de manifester, mais quand même de, de faire la grève, ce qui, ce qui, ce qui, ce qui correspond à des sacrifices assez importants. Uh, the one, what, our first argument is the one that is more known, is the argument of, of accessibility to education. Basically, what we said is, if you increase tuition fees, well, you have less uh, accessibility to university. Um, and unlike what is said in a lot of medias, uh, the tuition freeze policy in Quebec had clear uh, results on accessibility to university. Okay, I can give three, only three brief examples. Quebec in Canada is the place Uh, where you can find in the universities the most students from middle class in programs like medicine, pharmacy, and engineering. It's almost, the, it's, a, it's also the province um, in Canada where you find the most students from remote areas, and it's also the place in Canada where you find the most first generation of students. Mm -hmm. In Quebec, actually, uh, approximately half of the students are first generation students, mm -hmm. or students that are the first of their families to go to university. Um, and, and those advantages, those historical advantages that we had, we, uh, we won it with the combined effect of uh, an institution that is called the CEGEP, which is a very Quebec thing. It's a mandatory, transitory, free college, and it is free, it's in detail, between high school and university. Uh, so the existence of this institution and the policy of tuition freeze in the 90s uh, made that today in Quebec we have a post-secondary uh, frequentation rate of uh, nine, well, uh, our frequentation rate, uh, rate is 9% above the Canadian average. Uh, so when the Liberal Party talks about uh, to us to, uh, to reach the Canadian average of uh, tuition fees, we will probably also reach the Canadian average of frequentation. And that's not a good news for, uh, for, the, for the Quebec students. So that's for the first argument. Accessibility. You make education, vous rendez l'éducation plus chère, il y a moins de gens qui vont à l'université. C'est un argument assez simple. Le deuxième argument qu'on a utilisé pour convaincre les étudiants et les étudiantes est un peu plus idéologique et c'était d'essayer de, de, de faire comprendre qu'en fait la hausse des frais de scolarité était un symptôme. C'était un symptôme d'une problématique beaucoup plus grande dans les universités euh, québécoises, il y a la même chose dans les universités canadiennes. Euh, ce qu'on euh, qu a dit au fond, c'est que c'était un, un symptôme de la privatisation des universités, what you can call in English commodification of universities. Uh, increasing tuition fees does not only changes who can go to university, it, only, it, it also changes the nature of university itself. When you increase tuition, you inevitably create a uh, student debt. And ironically, student debt is presented by our government as a solution to the increasing of tuition fees. Uh, well, anyway, uh, when, uh, when you know that going to university is going to bring you a debt of $40,000, uh, well, you choose the good university and you choose the good, you choose the good program, you will be naturally uh, pushed to shop your education. Uh, you will choose a program that will bring you a good salary. And obviously, philosophy, fine arts, and literature will not be on your list. Mm -hmm. So when you increase tuition, you are able to modify... <laughs> so when you increase tuition fees, you do something very intelligent. You modify the relation that each student <coughs> has with the uh, institution, with his own education. So all the ideological and neoliberal discourse that justifies the increase, which basically, like Marianne says, said, well, you can have a debt because you have a, biggest, uh, a bigger salary, so you could uh, reimburse your debt like that. It's the argument, but if you increase tuition fees, in fact, this argument becomes true because you, you will have to reflect your education process like that if you want to go to university. So, briefly, in the process of privatizing the universities, the economic elite has to obviously change the funding of university. You have to pass from a public financing to a private, to, uh, to a private financing, from a uh, public to a philanthropic and, invi and individual financing. You have also to change the activities of the universities. You have to go from teaching and, uh, and fundamental research to commercial research. Um, and by increasing tuition fees, you sort of play your last, uh, 
your last uh, move because you you are doing something very deep. You are able to change uh, the way each student sees its own in, uh, education. And if you really want to transform universities into enterprises, well, you have to make sure that education is seen by the student itself as a commodity. Uh, and that's precisely the role of the tuition hike in the process of pri privatizing universities. So that's probably the two main arguments that, that we uh, used to convince people that it was not a good idea to increase tuition fees.